Hi everybody, uh, I know that's not my usual greeting, but I don't really have a lot of time, so... <laughs> um, yeah, this is gonna be a big batch review video, it's not, well, it's not gonna be big, it's just, you know, I've got 37 apps to go through. I'm not gonna spend a whole bunch of time talking about them, I'm just gonna say what they are, and, uh, try and describe them a little bit, and obviously also give them all a grade, and, uh... My cat's here too, so I say we go, because I really do not have the time to waste. We begin with Alt and their album Abeyance, I'm giving this one a straight up B. Really solid, emotive, uh, style post hardcore with some nice experimental alternative rock vibes. I did think the lyrics were a bit cliche at times, but you know, I'm okay with cliche. Uh, I did enjoy most of the uh, riff work and the... Uh, production was good too. Next we have Athena with their new album Subway Anthem. Well, it's Athena, but it's spelled without the H, essentially. Pronounced like Athena, though, weirdly enough. Uh, hardcore punk, uh, hardcore punk music from Sweden. And I surprisingly really enjoy this one. I heard about this, like, from a uh, Bogdan HXC uh, wrap-up, uh, well, best of a year list that he did. And it was one of the albums I was more interested in checking out and giving it an A. Really enjoyed it. Solid dynamics, really good lyrical themes. Surprisingly good experimentation as well for an album that's not that long. And yeah, it just gets a lot in. It could be in my top 30 at some point. I don't know, I've still got some rearranging to do. Next we have Blood Command and their new album World Domination. I'm giving this one a C+. It is sort of what they usually do, but with a bit more experimentation that doesn't work. It feels a bit wishy-washy and all over the place. I do find the core concept to be interesting, and they do try and uh, do something with it, but it just doesn't work. I do find most of the instrumental instrumentation all right, as uh, same with the production, but it just feels like it's unnecessarily convoluted in places. Next is Dream Nails with their second album, I believe, Doom Loop. They blew me away with their uh, debut, even though I didn't put that on a best of list. I might put this one on a best of list, though. A, uh, really good themes about toxic masculinity and uh, rape culture and uh, sexism as well. Just really well handled stuff, a lot more serious than the last one, I would say. A bit more focused and a bit more biting and venomous and... Really good feminist punk if you're into that stuff. I highly recommend checking it out. Next is Fires in the Distance with their new album, Air Not Meant For Us. This is some pretty solid, sort of, uh, very nicely layered heavy metal, uh, sort of a death metal -y vibe, I guess you could say. Metalcore, I'm giving this a B plus. I really enjoyed it. I thought it had some really good concepts and really good themes. Executes it mostly well for the most part. It is a bit of a long boy album and a lot of the songs are fairly long too. I think three of them are like 10 minutes long each. But as it is, really solid and another uh, big recommend from me. By the way, I'm not doing like a grading system by the end. I'm not even going to give, well, I am going to give best uh, record uh, album, album cover by the end of the video. But I'm not going to be doing like, you know, low, like the ranking like from 37th to 1st. I'm not gonna do that. Let's go take the look. Moving on though, we have Green Lung and their album This Heathen Land. Very tightly put together stoner doomy metal stuff. Uh, again, also gets a B plus. In fact, there's a lot of B pluses in a row looking at this. Um, <laughs> it was all good though. Well, most of it was really good. Uh, really solid uh, instrumental work. I love the guitar especially. Nice production too. Very clean. I like that there was an attempt at lyrical theme. Uh, just really good all around. Not super great, could have stood to maybe sh have been shortened a little bit, but what it pulls off is really good. Next we have Grove Street with their new album, The Path to Righteousness. Straight up, slammy style hardcore punk. Uh, really loved how hard it hit, and it hits really fucking hard for the most part. I'm giving this one also B+. I uh, really enjoyed uh, the, uh, well, sort of the lack of dynamics, but the basic but still heavy hitting style, and some good lyricism too, and solid performances as well. A bit like a clean version of Harm's Way's new album. So, yeah, uh, check it out for that alone, if, if, especially if you're a Harm's Way fan. But this this is definitely their own beast, Grove Street R. Next is the HIRS Collective, or the Hearst Collective, I don't know how to pronounce it, with We're Still Here. Um, a top tier queer punk album and also only gets a B plus because there's a lot of fucking songs and a lot of features on this one and I feel like it could have done with a bit of neatening up at times but it does talk about the themes it executes really well and it's got good instrumentation. I like that it's just trying to experiment with the many many songs that are on it so give it a listen for that it's a very interesting album. Next is King with Fury and Death a really fucking good death metal album I uh, love a lot of the instrumentation on it, love the lyrical themes, I think there was a concept to it. Giving this one an A. Really enjoyable stuff, uh, yeah, just straight up. Very, very heavy, very nicely layered as well. Finds intelligent ways to pace itself too, it doesn't just run out of steam early, so yeah, really good stuff from that. Next is Koyo with their new album, Would You Miss It? Uh, this is a uh, very Midwest emo-leaning pop-punk. Uh, got that sort of gravelly style that I've always enjoyed. I'm giving this one also a B+. Uh, 
really enjoyable stuff for the most part. I like the earnesty and honesty to it. It's not the best album like this I've heard. In fact, there's a few uh, like this I've heard that could be on the top end of the list. Uh, well, in the top 30, rather, I should say. But good lyrics, good performances, really believable instrumentation work, and uh, nice production, too, for what it is. Next is Making Friends with their album Fine Dying. Um, I did think this was an Australian act, but I looked into it. They're from Brighton in the UK. And I'm giving this one an A minus. I really enjoyed a lot of the uh, themes of it. A very good mel melodic hardcore leaning pop punk album with a whole bunch of throwbacks to four year strong's early stuff that's like probably the biggest reminder it, it makes me think of but it's still is very unique thing it does sort of run the numbers a little bit too much but it does have good themes it's got a ton of charm and personality to it as well uh just a very fun album very fun a lot of hardcore punky uh, pop punky stuff so yeah i can recommend if you just want to put a smile on your face for a little bit next is military gun with their album life under the gun i can't remember a whole bunch about this album i think it's like an alternative rock uh, leaning indie piece I'm giving it a B minus. Um, I did like the instrumentation enough. I do think it does drag in some places with what it's trying to do, but I don't think it does those things in a necessarily bad way. I uh, I just wish I could remember a whole lot more of it. I do remember enjoying it at the very least. Uh, production was good too. I think liked performances as well. Next is Nothing But Thieves with their new album Dead Club City, and I wasn't a big fan of their previous album. This one is slightly better. I gave this one a B minus. As you know. I can see it on my on my scripts here. Uh, solid instrumentation. Um, I do like the attempt at a concept, though. I just don't think it works super well. But there is a certain level of honesty to the band's performances. They, it's a better sounding album than the last one, in my opinion. And uh, I, I do like some of the writing, and I like the instrumentation uh, enough. So, yeah. Next is Of Virtue with their new album, Omen. I did not think this was their fourth album. I thought this was going to be a debut, or at least their second one. Um... You know, solid enough post hardcore leaning metalcore stuff. I'm giving this one a straight up B. I did like most of the uh, riff work on it. I do think it could have stood to be a bit in the heavier areas because I think that's where the band shines the most. But I do like the attempts at melody. And it does uh, emote quite well and tell really good lyrics and has really good performances, especially from the lead vocalist. So good stuff from that point. Next is Pony with the album Velveteen. Very, very, very charming pop punky stuff. I'm giving it a B plus. I like the honesty of the lyrical themes. I thought uh, Pony herself, because I think it's just her, a uh, really good performer, an amazing singer too. She's got a really, really good voice to her. And uh, yeah, just puts out a lot of charm. Very well produced album too, and nicely written, and tightly packed for what it is. Uh, just really, really enjoyable stuff. Next is Proto Marta with any album Formal Growth in the Desert. Sort of a post-punky uh, sort of vibe, I think. Giving this one a B. Uh, another one I don't remember a whole ton of because I haven't spun it back a whole bunch, but I do, I, you know, I did like the layering of the instrumentation. I thought the riff work was nice, you know. I do think it does try and stick to one thing too much, and I do think the lyrics are a little bit fucking weird, but mostly enjoyable. I liked, I uh, love the production of it, and I thought the pacing was mostly good. Next is Resolve with Human, and basically everything I said about Alt's album, like, at the start of the video, I could basically say about this one. Very emotive, post-hardcore, leaning metalcore sort of thing. Um, a little bit heavier than Alt's album, and uh, a bit more willing to take the risks, I would say, and it pays off a little bit better, giving it a B+. Uh, nicely written for the most part, does execute what it tries to do really, really well. So, uh, yeah. Get, worth giving a spin for that. Next is probably one of the biggest ones, maybe the biggest album I'm covering in this entire video. Uh, Reverend Chris and Michael Hater uh, with the album Save. So Reverend Chris and Michael Hater is the new name of uh, Kristen Hater, better known uh, formally as Lingua Ignota. This is the first non-Lingua Ignota album she's put out. I'm giving this one to B+. Uh, really fun, uh, well not fun, really darkly layered uh, southern gospel leaning sort of tape music album, which is the first time I've ever heard about the phrase tape music in my life, um, using the theme of religion as a theme for the process of healing, which is something that's always been a benchmark of Kristen's lyrics, which are still absolutely fantastic, and her central performance as well is great, especially near the end of the final song, I actually started to fucking fear for my life at some point. Next is Rise of the North Star with Showdown, and this is the band that gets best album cover because it looks like an anime poster I want in my bedroom. I'm giving this one a B, uh, solid, um, sort of, I think they're initially new metal, but they've got hardcore punk elements and also J-rock elements, which is weird because they're from France, so not really cultures you would expect to clash, but they do work in the elements well. I do think it tries to keep it a bit too basic with the heavy stuff, but it does hit when needed, and it's got some really good performances and a lot of grit to its teeth, so... I enjoy that. Next is Russ and Kelly with The Weakness. Um, giving it a B, I feel like his uh, sort of like pop rocky 
Uh, sort of slightly country-leaning stuff does work well, and he does spend a lot of time grieving about the uh, relationship he had with... Was it... Uh, I don't remember the name. I'll, I'll put it up, though. Um, but, you know, really good lyrics for the most part. Really believable performance. I do think the production is a little bit much at times, but it does its job quite well. Next is Sadus. Sadus? S-A-D-U-S with their album The Shadow Inside. Uh, more good death metal. Uh, very, very punchy. Very straightforward. Also given a bit of a B plus, uh, well, the entire B plus and nothing but the B plus. Uh, yeah, very, uh, very good metal. I almost want to say the word fun again. Not, not fun. Good death metal though. Really good uh, layering. Uh, sort of, you know, a bit what you expect from the lyrics, but the performances are bloody great, and the production's really, really clean and smooth too for this sort of style. Next is Screaming Females and their album Desire Pathway. I cannot believe that this one came out back in February, and I can't believe I almost missed it. And I'm giving it an A. I think it could be in the top 30. I really bloody enjoyed this one. I spun this one probably more than most of the other albums in this batch review. Really solid indie, indie rock with really good themes. Love the production of it. Love the pacing. Oh, really good performances too. I like the riff. I just really like this album. I could be talking about it more soon. Next is Shoplifters with their album Second Nature. Um, sort of a... Uh, old school pop punky vibes, so the, like that mid two thousand five. Giving a B minus. Uh, I thought it was fine enough what it was. I do think the lyrics are a little bit much, and I feel like the overall structure was a little bit again paint by numbers sort of thing. But you know, charming enough, oh. and uh, really good riff work. I do wish there were more solos though, and production nice too. Next is the Side Eyes with their album What's Your Problem. This is some good old Australian punk. Very nice Australian pop punk. And giving it a B plus. Um, just, it's a very short album, which I think is why it gets a B plus, but I do think it gets a lot in for what it tries to do. Uh, very big instrumentation. Uh, very fast paced. Very sharp uh, lyrics as well. Very witty. And a good performance from the lead vocalists. Next is Soft Kill with the album Meta World Peace. Um, sort of a lo-fi alternative experimental hip hop thing with not a lot of songs on it but it is listed as a full album album i'm giving this one to b plus i couldn't remember if this was the same soft kill i've covered before though i did have to double check that and i think it was uh mostly good stuff though i like the guitar work i think the production is quite nice i like a lot of the lyrics too i just wish i could have stuck my brain into it a little bit more because i spent it a couple of times but you know enjoyable really really good stuff next is stitched apart with the album to the walls um sort of a uh, grungy, well, not really grungy, sort of like a heavy metal hard rock thing. Uh, not a ton of original ideas, giving it a B minus because I think it does lack a bit of an identity, but I do think it achieves the uh, rock effort quite well, and I think the performances are really good. Production saves a lot of the album for me. I just think it could have done a little bit more with what it has. Next is Taking Back Sunday with 152, uh, their first album in about seven years, and I'm giving it a B. A B. Uh, really good uh, post art well, not post article really good uh, sort of emo, what you would expect from the band. They sound a lot more mature than they ever have. Adam Lazaro sounds a lot better than he has in a while. Uh, really good stuff, very earnest. Uh, I like that it addresses, I like what it addresses in lyrics, and uh, yeah, just good production too, to boot. Next is Terminator with Salt Elegy. Terminator is Nick Nocturnal's band with a friend of his, whose name I cannot remember. Uh, you know, it's not as good as the previous one. I'm still giving it a B plus though. It's still some really good, uh, very punchy metalcore stuff. I do wish it experimented a little bit more with what it tries to do, and it does lack some occasion places, but really good performances from Nick and the people he works with because there's some really good features on this. Uh, nice uh, pacing as well. Really, really nicely paced and good riff work. Good riff work. Next is Two Malt with their album The Enduring Spirit. Uh, the Canadian death metal uh, powerhouses are back after four years. I'm giving this one the highest grade of the entire batch review and uh, A+. Plus. Really fucking enjoy this one. Love the uh, themes, love the layering of the instrumentation, good performances. They even try and take a few more risks and it pays the hell off. And again, another one I could be talking about more in my top 30 probably. Really fucking like this one. Next is Unity TX with Ferality. I, I think p at bands at the TX to specify, even though I've never seen any other band do that, depending on the state they're in. Um, a minus though, really solid new metal core style stuff. I like it when it tries to stick to that though. I'm not a big fan of when it does the rappy cliche lyrics of like uh, banging women, because it does th do that a few times. When it sticks to its political minded stuff, when it sticks to the Rage Against the Machine, FIFA 333 style, I think that's where it shines the most. And it's got some really good uh, dynamics and very, very heavy instrumentation. So, yeah, take that with it as well. It's really good. Next is Vistus with Is This All We Are? And honestly, probably the most forgettable album in this entire thing. I'm giving it a C. 
uh, I can't remember a, a whole bunch about it. I think it's an instrument, uh, not an instrumental album. It is an album with lyrics. Uh, I think it's indie rock, and just again by the numbers, follows the trends, doesn't really push itself out a whole bunch, and threatens to do it, and you know tries to put a smile on my face, but it doesn't fucking work. So yeah. it's it's fine though. I guess it's harmless. Toothless but harmless. Next is Varsity, I hope I'm saying that correctly, with the album Levitate, which I'm giving a C plus. Um, so this is a this is a band with a lot of uh, talent, and the lead vocalist has an amazing range to his voice. But the album is sort of the polar opposite of Vistas's album, because this one actually tries to get the ball rolling with some experimentation, and none of it works, and also it just feels that like they copy a lot of other bands. They don't really have an identity. To be honest, I do find the instrumentation to be really good. The production is a big, big uh, saving point, and the lead vocalist does a really good job too. I just feel like it could have been a lot more, a lot bit less focused. I think it's a bit too focused, weirdly. Next is Wargasm with Venom, probably one of the bigger albums I'm covering in the video, and a lot of people swear by this one. I'm going to give it a B. I thought it was some really good hardcore punk stuff um, with really good performances from the vocalists involved and a very rough and aggressive sound. I think it could have done more with the uh, with the pacing, to be honest. I feel like it tries to get through shit a bit too quickly, but I do enjoy it. Next is The Word Live with Hard Reset. I think this is the album I listened to the most, and this thing came out back in August. It's not like the earliest album on the list, but god damn, I almost forgot this came out, and then I listened to it, and I've listened to it several times. I'm going to get an A. Just really nice to hear The Word Live again. Um, really good vocal work from Tyler Tilly Smith. Really good work from the new members too. Good lyrical themes, really high quality production too. Uh, another one I could possibly be talking about soon. I don't know. I really fucking enjoyed this one. Last I go to the video though. So Next I'm going to sort of do uh, two in one if I may. It's not something I often do. Uh, Warriors with their two new albums, Warm Blanket and Trust Your Gut. Now usually I do do like um, the album title in order, but Warm Blanket came out like five months before Trust Your Gut did. Uh, Warm Blanket gets a B, Trust Your Gut gets a B plus. It's the Warriors, like, uh, Midwest emo, pop punky sort of vibes. The first one is more in the emo and folky vibe, weirdly enough. Uh, that being Warm Blanket and Trust Your Gut has more of a pop punk feel to it. Uh, both really enjoyable, really charming. The lead vocalist does their absolute best to knock it out of the park too. Um, and, and they do, they do that quite well. And really good produ uh, production on both. I just think uh, Trust Your Good has a bit of an edge, a bit more of an edge to it, but I still quite enjoy both. And finally, Year of the Knife with their new album, No Love Lost, which I am giving a B. I liked it more than I liked the last one, but I still feel like they're lacking a certain something. It's a very heavy album. I think it's heavier than the previous one. It's got more of a focus, but it does need to try and mix things up a bit. Still, the band have a good identity, and I like a lot of the themes that they go for. And that's it. It only took me 20 minutes to review about 37 albums, not including the time it'll take for me to edit this shit. I'm going to be spending um, pff, most of the rest of the day, and I think tomorrow, trying to write up my top 30s, maybe listening back to a few of the albums on this. And um, yeah, if you're going to spin out any of these, feel free to do it. I mean, nothing was inherently bad. There was just some bland stuff that I had to cover. And... Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun putting together my top 30, especially with all this having been reviewed. So I'll see you all most likely uh, not until maybe Tuesday for the first of uh, the top 30. Maybe. We'll see what happens. Um, but there's nothing tomorrow. And the next thing that's probably going to be happening is going to be next Friday because there'll be the go-home show for PPW vs. AVW. So, yeah, I don't think there'll be any videos before then, but if I can push, maybe you'll get my top, uh, top 30 stuff, starting with... Uh, Monday or maybe Tuesday working through it uh, till Thursday. As always though, thank you for watching your awesome.